Hey kiddos, welcome back. Pre-AP Chemistry, talking about the laboratory. We're moving into measurement and a discussion of accuracy and precision. We only have another one or two movies in this little series, so I hope you're enjoying your flipped experience. Now, there are two basic types of data that we're going to collect in the lab, and you always, always have to have one of them. And the one that is always present is the qualitative data. There is always something to see or describe uh, in, in a lab. There's always going to be colors and uh, attributes that need to be written down because they're important pieces of evidence. Right? Now, some of the labs have, many of them, also have quantitative data. Sorry, that's a pretty crappy cue, isn't it? Quantitative data quantities, numerical information, a mass, a temperature, a pressure, you know, values that you're going to write down. Qualitative is going to be about clarity. Is it clear or is it opaque? Does it have a color or is it colorless? Notice there's a big difference between colorless and clear. Those are describing two different attributes of a substance, all right? Uh, now, when we are dealing with uh, quantitative data, we may have errors or uncertainty. I mean, the likelihood that we are right on the bullseye is pretty slim. And there's two terms that we're going to be using. We use accuracy and precision, and they don't mean the same thing. So you want to make sure you can compare and contrast those two terms. The first one is accuracy, and accuracy is discussing how close we are to what is considered the true, I'm going to put that in parentheses, because that's the accepted value. In other words, that's the best that scientists have been able to do so far. The day may come when we get better equipment that can measure with greater accuracy and precision, but for now, that's the true or accepted value. Um, sometimes we compare to the theoretical value, uh, but by and large, it's going to be the true or actual value. And we're going to report that as a percentage. Whenever we have quantitative data, you will likely be doing a percent error. So we have true minus our experiment over our true times 100. Now, some people like to put make this be an absolute value so that it's always positive. Personally, I don't because knowing whether or not your value is too high or too low is, I think, very, very important. So a positive number means that you are too low. A negative number means your value is too high. So if you have a positive balance in a bank account, you spend a lower or less amount than is available. If you have a negative balance in your account, that means you spent a higher amount than you should have and you went over. So positive means it's too low. Negative means it's too high. So let's do a few of those calculations. They require some algebra. Um, if you want to list your givens, you can, but you'll always be able to write on your tests. And sometimes it saves a little time to just circle or highlight. You are allowed to use a highlighter. So the student recorded the mass, so that's my experimental value. The actual or true mass is given here. So now if we plug that into our value, and I want to emphasize here, all work leading up to the final answer must be shown in order to get any credit. You cannot simply plug into a calculator and expect to get credit. So if you didn't show the actual formula, that's okay, but you better show the substitution into the formula. All right, then if you don't show every step of the algebra, I'm okay with that. I can give you at least some partial credit, and we would get 1.5% for this. All right, let's try the trickier one. We have an error of plus 22.5%. 
So that's our error and it's positive. Plus 22.5%. Okay? Now, in the lab, they found the object to be. So that's my experiment. And the question is, what is the actual? So do you see you can identify your unknowns within the context of the question and it saves you a little time. So my true is my unknown, minus 122.4 over my true, and that would be times 100. Okay. Now this takes a little bit of algebraic manipulation, and so I'm going to walk through this once. And then I'm going to give you the answers to the next two, and I'm going to expect you to have them worked out when you walk into class. So um, I'm going to first, I want to get rid of this 100. The opposite operation of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100. And if I do that, it cancels on the one side. And if I divide 22.5 by 100, I get 0.225. So that was my first step. Now, I need to get this unknown out of the denominator. And it's divided, so my next step is to deal with this guy here. It's divided, the opposite operation is multiplication. So to move it to the other side, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. Okay. So that's my step two, and that's a T. Don't want to mess that up on you. Sorry about that. Now, for my third step, I want to cluster like terms. So I want to get this over to the other side, and it's added over here, so I'm going to subtract it. So I'd have T minus 0.225T minus 122.4 is equal to 0. Now my final step is to bring this over to the, not final, next step, to bring that over. So then I'd have t minus 0.225t. Isn't it nice that you can rewind me if you, if I, if you think I'm going a little bit too fast? Okay. Now this has an implied 1 in front of this. So 1t minus 0.225t, I'm going to go up here to step 5, I'm running out of room, sorry about that, gives me 0.775t is equal to 122.5. Now, now I'm on my last step. I want to bring this over to the other side, so I divide both sides. And if I divide both sides by 0.775, or 0.775, all right, I'm going to get 157.9 grams. Don't forget your units. Okay. Now there are two more of these. I'm not going to work them both, but I am going to give you the answers. This one comes out to be minus 6.37% and Clyde was too high. This one is one of those tricky algebra. That's as hard as it's going to get. You have to do that before you come in. You have to at least have it set up when you walk into class the day this video is due. And we're going to get that T, our true, is equal to 22.4 liters per mole. You may not know what those units are. That's okay. Just plug in the numbers. All right? Now, until then, remember, you have to at least set these up, if not try them. This is signing off.